Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020. It's the last day in April, so let's make it count. All right, so yesterday um, was Work It Out Wednesday, and I have posted our answers to that uh, activity. Here in our units column, which again, you could have used your addition finger chart, stamp game, small bead frame, large bead frame, or mental math. The tens column, problems were a little bit larger. There was no exchanging though. So that could have been done on stamp, on small bead frame, large bead frame. Some of you might be doing it with paper and pencil as well. Might be a few of you who are able to do that in your head. And in our hundreds column, again, you were doing some dynamic subtraction. So you were borrowing. Um, again, this column could have been done on the stamp game, small bead frame, large bead frame. And for those of you who have built up to subtraction on paper and pencil. So those are your answers. Uh, if you need to pause the video to check more carefully, go ahead. I am going to show you Thursdays really quickly, and then I'm going to pull out another board to demonstrate how to do it. <clears throat> All right. Get us a little bit closer here. All right. So our instructions say, record if these equations are true or false. Are true or false. So in the units, tens, and hundreds column, there are equations. And some of them are correct. If they're correct, meaning they are true, you would write true. If they are incorrect, you would write false on the line. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to move us back to the original location and pull out another whiteboard because I want to review a concept with you that all thirds and all second years have seen that have gotten to checkerboard. Oops. Um, not all first years have seen this yet, so if this is brand new to you, feel free to listen along and, and uh, see what you can learn from it. All right. So we have three symbols. You've all seen this one. This means equals. So you might see it if it were something like four equals two plus two. You could see it that way, or it could be the other way. Could be two plus two equals four. You've probably seen it this way more often. So here it means equals. This symbol, I like to think of it as an alligator's mouth or a crocodile, this symbol means greater than, and this symbol means less than. So you might see it like this. Five is greater than three. And that's a true statement because what number is larger? Five or three? Five. If you had five quarters, you would have more than if you had three quarters. So five is greater than three way I can remember, I put little teeth. And that shows me. <clears throat> and the alligator always wants, the alligator mouth always wants to eat the bigger number. So five is greater than three. Then we also have less than. So if we flipped these numbers and it was three and five, well, which number is greater? The five. So you're gonna have the alligator mouth eating the larger number or the five. But the way you would read this statement is three is less than five, which makes sense because if you had three pennies, you would have fewer than five, the person with five pennies. All right, so now in the um, Thursday math sheet, you're gonna see some equations like these three. And you're gonna have to say if the statement is true or false, so five equals three plus two. If I have three and I add two, 
One, two, three, four, five. Three plus two is five. So this statement is true. Five does equal three plus two. So you'd write true next to that equation if it was valid. This next one says five is less than three plus three. Well, let's figure out what three plus three is. Three plus three is six. So I can rewrite this. I can write five is less than six. Well, is the alligator mouth eating the bigger number? It sure is. So this statement is also true. And then here, five is less than one times two. Well, let's rewrite this. Let's do that operation. One times two is one, two times, so two. Five times, or two, one times two is two. And we had it as this. Is the alligator mouth eating the bigger number? No, two is less than five. So this statement is false. All right? And that is what the... Uh, math, or the number talk looks like for today. Um, now those unit, unit ones, you're only going to interact with the equal sign. When you do get into the tens, you'll still only have the equal sign, but you're going to have operations on both sides, so you'll have to solve them first to see if it's true or false. And then if you do get into the hundreds column, that's when you start to see greater than and less than. So, if you forget which one is greater, which one is less, um, come back to this video, rewatch it. Um, that's a great way to, to uh, remember uh, or to engage with it again, okay? So that's your number talk for the morning. And before we get into today's language uh, conversation, um, there were some questions from yesterday, and um, the questions uh, were answered in two different ways from you all. Um, a lot of you did share your work from yesterday with me, so thank you. I love receiving your work. For those of you who are still not sending it, um, think of it as when you're at school, if you complete something, you either put your name in the basket, and I will come over and check your work if it's something you can't um, bring to me, um, or you'll put it in the turn in basket. Think about taking a picture and sending it to me as like putting something in the turn in basket. That way I can engage with it, that way I can look at it, see how you're doing, and give you some meaningful feedback, and show you the next work if you are ready for it. All right, so yesterday we looked at three story elements. We looked at conflict, or we looked at plot, excuse me, conflict and resolution. And the plot was um, the series of related events that make up the story. And plots usually have a clear beginning, middle, and end. And I encouraged you to make something like this and identify the beginning, middle, and end of your of the story about Louis Pasteur. And interestingly enough, people came up with two different ideas. Some people told the story of Louis Pasteur believing in himself, studying, working really hard, not giving up when people made fun of him or teased him, and eventually accomplishing his goal. And they told that story using beginning, middle, and end. Other people chose to relate the story about Joey, the young boy who was teasing a dog and was bit by that rabid dog. And then Joey developed rabies and was sick, and his parents took him to a doctor they heard about called Louis Pasteur, and Louis gave him the medicine, and the boy got better. Joey got better. Um, and so there were two different, uh, <clears throat> two different ideas from you all, and that's awesome. And a lot of times, stories will have a little story within a larger story. And I would argue that the little story about Joey is the little part of the story, and the bigger part of the story is about Louis um, being curious and wanting to be a scientist as a child, working really hard throughout school, never giving up even when people teased him, 
and then becoming that famous helpful scientist and changing the world. Um, the second story element was the conflict or the problem. And some of you, it depended which story you focused on. If you focused on Louis and becoming a scientist, some of, some of you identified the conflict as people teasing him or uh, discouraging him or the work being challenging. And Louis resolved that by continuing to work hard, by not giving up, continuing to believe in himself, to believe in his true voice. And uh, he persevered uh, and eventually discovered a rabies vaccination, uh, a way to um, address anthrax, which is another um, poison which can get into your body, as well as the pasteurization process, which helps you and I enjoy our milk. Others focused on Joey. And so they said the conflict was when Joey um, became sick, when he was bit by the rabid dog, and um, he had a short period of time to live or to be cured. And his parents rushed him to Louis Pasteur, who injected him for the first time, any human, with his uh, vaccine for rabies. And it was resolved when the boy became healthy again, when Joey recovered. So two different stories in parallel tell, going throughout uh, the short story. Um, but I'd say that all of the answers to those questions, if you answered in either way, as long as you were sticking with your story, could be argued that they were correct. Um, <clears throat> now, this is not really a new story element, but cause and effect is something we talk a lot about in science. Um, we talk about it when we look at experiments. What caused something to happen? What caused this outcome? Ooh, I'm going to create a hypothesis, an, an educated guess, and then I'm going to test to see if I can figure out what the cause was of this effect. And we see this same relationship, cause and effect, in, in literature, in language. So cause and effect <clears throat> is a relationship when something happens which causes something else to happen. So for example, Susie mastered her times facts because she practiced every day. The effect was she mastered her times tables. What was the cause? Because she practiced every day. The food in the fridge spoiled when the electricity went out. The cause? The electricity went out. The effect? The food in the fridge spoiled. That'd be sad, especially during this time. Food is very important and vital right now. Luckily, hopefully it hasn't happened for you, to you. And we see cause and effect in our story as well. So I've given three cause-effect relationships. The first one, Louis believed in himself and never gave up. So he accomplished his goal. What was the outcome, the effect? He accomplished his goal, and why? What caused that? Believing in himself and never giving up. All right, and there were two others that I've started. I've given you the cause, but I'm curious if you can tell me what the effect is. Joey teased a rabid dog, so the dog blank. Louis gave Joey the rabies vaccine, and Joey blank. Go ahead and complete those cause and effect sentences and uh, share them with me. If you can think of another cause and effect relationship in that short story, go ahead, share that as well. I'd love to hear your feedback. All right, and to wrap things up this morning, of course, a who am I? So yesterday's, I am the most plentiful insect on earth. I live and work with hundreds of companions. We each have a special job to do. Our nest is called a colony, and we build them in many different places. I am not welcome at picnics. Do you know who I am? If you guessed the ant, you are correct. Ants live in colonies, and they build them all over. Perhaps you've seen ant mounds in your backyard or along sidewalks. And if you've ever experienced ants at a picnic, you know how unwelcome they are. <clears throat> and for today, people often do not like me, but they should. 
With my spinnerets, I make a kind of thread which I weave into a web. Flies and mosquitoes get caught in my web, and I eat them. Do you know my name? Tune in tomorrow to see if you know who I am. Have a great day, everyone.